Okay, so we have discs between our vertebrae. And these are like shock absorbers that um, protect um, the spine. Um, it's also kind of weird because we are bipedal, so we're standing up. So there's a lot of pressure put on the discs. If you imagine if you were like your dog or your cat, there would be not so much weight and pressure put down on your discs if you were on all fours. So if we look at the structure here, um, this would show the spinal cord. So this is actually nervous tissue traveling through the vertebral foramen. This is actually the spinal nerves. The spinal nerves exit between the vertebrae in um, what are called the intervertebral foramen. So this is uh, the spinal nerve. This is a really important, you need to, to know this, um, uh, this anatomy. Um, the spinal nerve is actually really short and then it branches and it goes to the back of your body and then to the front of your body. So the intervertebral discs have two components. So they have this inner gelatinous component, which is called the nucleus propulsus. And so this is gelatinous. And so it gives um, the disc its compressibility and it's also its ability to bounce back. So it's elasticity. So it's elasticity and compressibility are its two main characteristics. The outer disc is named the annulus fibrosus because of its similarities to tree rings. So you can see these rings that are going around here. And this is very fibrous. This is fibrocartilage. Um, and it has a lot of collagen fibers. And this actually um, uh, limits the um, compression of the discs and the movement of this nucleus pulposa. Don't, this is called nucleus pulposa because it is in the middle. It's not a nucleus, like it's not the nucleus of a cell. Um, and it's like a pulp, gelatinous pulp, okay? So this is fibrocartilage. And it has a lot of collagen fibers. And this limits the compressibility of the disc. So what we see here is, is that something has gone awry. So we see that there is the um, herniated portion of the disc. So when people talk about they have a herniated disc or a slipped disc, this is what they are referring to. So you can see that this part is coming through. And in this case, it's actually kind of lucky because they are, it is pressing on the spinal nerve and not on the spinal cord. It could also press on the spinal cord, but this one is on the spinal nerve. So this has to be like, um, maybe uh, it looks like it is probably a thoracic vertebrae um, because the spinal cord is still present. Um, oftentimes we get herniations in the lumbar region of the back and then there isn't the spinal cord, the spinal cord stops near L1, L2 and then um, any herniation is just gonna press on your spinal nerves. So a really common, most common region that this is um, happens is between L5 and S1. That's the most common. So that's the last lumbar vertebrae and its articulation with the sacrum. So S is sacrum. And this causes, um, can lead to what is called sciatica where you have compression of the spinal nerve that leads to like tingling, numbness, and pain traveling all the way down your leg. And so this is a very common problem. Maybe it deals with the fact that we sit um, so often, we sit so long and often, and that eventually compresses that disc and that can lead to uh, herniation. 